Salve, citizens. Uh, sorry, I've been watching a lot of Rome lately. So we're now at part four of this week's New Comics Bitches. Um, and I am a son of Hades. Um, if you haven't watched HBO's Rome, do yourself a favor. Just go out and buy the fucking thing. It costs a lot of money, but it's worth every goddamn penny. Um, it's the best thing that HBO's ever put out. Even though I'm watching Deadwood right now, uh, also, and it's the first time I'm seeing that, and I'm really enjoying that, too, so, um, anyway, comics, comic books, okay, uh, <laughs> okay, so, uh, another one of the major releases this week, I guess, maybe the most major of the releases this week, uh, is, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 666, um, is it a clue that they're giving us by numbering it 666? That is the prelude to Spider Island. Um, again, Dan Slott uh, teaming up with uh, Stefano Caselli for the art on this. Uh, Humberto Ramos is coming back in the next issue in 667 uh, for the Spider Island arc. Uh, uh, I'm really, in, you know. Uh, again, Dan Slott has done so many great things for Amazing Spider-Man, I can't tell you. I mean, it's just, it's so it's so great to have a Spider-Man series that I'm reading every issue of and actually enjoying every issue of, pretty much. Fuck. Anyway, um, so, uh, you know, we've got, you know, Spidey's doing his thing. Uh, the first exchange, I mean, I'm not going to call it too many... Uh, uh, you know, kind of call out some plot points here, obviously, but um, like, for instance, we've got uh, fucking, uh, we got uh, J. Jonah Jameson uh, dealing with his popularity figures slumping because of his anti-Spider-Man campaign and all the funds that he's spending on that because New Yorkers are starting to really come out and say, hey, we like Spidey. Spidey's awesome. He's on two Avengers teams, he's on the FF, and he's doing his own solo thing, so, um, and uh, at uh, you know, and then we've got uh, Spidey using one of his new uh, Horizon Indus you know, uh, uh, his new Horizon Labs e experiments uh, to take down Hydro Man, who's fighting uh, a trio of uh, superheroes. Uh, uh, and one of them is Firestar, and. Uh, you know he has so he has some amazing friends. Uh, those of you who are too young to get that reference, I'll understand. Um, but uh, that was just you know it was a cool throwback for guys like me uh, who are in their mid thirties and have lived a long time. Anyway, and I'm not bitter about being <clears throat> in my thirties. Anyway, um, Unstable Molecules, that is fucking awesome, that uh, basically Spidey has retrofitted his costume, so it will, that it's Unstable Molecules, and you can just basically, at the flip of whatever, a switch, if you will, he can go from, uh, you know, his Spidey costume to street clothes, so he's not always, you know, doing the, you know, stripping down to uh, everything. Um... And then can even change into the the FF uh, Spider-Man uh, costume, um, and uh, Carly uh, calls Peter and basically tells him that there's that they need to talk about something. Um, she's got a surprise for him. Uh, in fact, the whole goddamn city has a surprise for Peter Parker. Um, but the most important players on the board, at least as far as the uh, villains are concerned, we have the return of Professor Miles Warren. Uh, in, you know, as we, you know, I, I should say in full jackal mode. Because we've seen, you know, obviously building up to this, we've seen, you know, little one or two page bits, you know, of kind of the jackal observing uh, what he's been able to do. Um, you know, it t also touches on, uh, you know, uh, May and Jay, Aunt May and Jay Jameson leaving, uh, New York to go to Boston. 
but uh, um, but definitely Miles Warren. Uh, he has just there's so I mean there's so much stuff in this issue. This is worth this is one of those comics that's worth every penny because it's just jam packed, but not jam packed in the way that Dark Knight was. Uh, that ba- that this week's issue of Dark Knight was, but uh, it gives everybody due time and due development. Um, you know, we got Phil Yurick uh, still being creepy as all fuck. He's just, you know, I, um, I'm unsure as to when he went bad because he had his own Green Goblin, you know, series for a while, and you know, he was like the anti Green Goblin. Green Goblin, he was like a force for good. And now he's very much seems to be a force for evil. Um, you know, we've got Betty, who's still recovering. She's in the hospital, which a lot of people are being brought to uh, with these very strange symptoms. Um, we've got uh, criminals who are, uh, you know, uh, we you know who seem to be exhibiting spider-like powers. We've got uh, MJ. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Flash Thompson slash Venom, uh, you know, doing his doing his work. Um, we've got you know the you know the FF is you know this is all happening pre Fear itself because uh, we've got the thing he's back you know he's being normal thing and he actually goes you know um, they they make a joke about uh, Avengers Poker Night. And lo and behold, uh, the thing and uh, and Spidey go t- and have an Avengers poker night. Um, you know, it's just filled with little bits of humor like that, but also bits of real intrigue. Um, and then we have, of course, you know, we have uh, Shang Chi and Madame Web. Uh, and Madame Web is kind of testing uh, Peter to see what he's learned from Shang Chi. You know the you know the the way of the spider fighting style that they've come up with, um, but basically, Madame Web says in order to survive what's coming, in order to defeat what's coming and survive, you have to be willing to develop. You know, because the word is one thing you ha- you don't have in your arsenal that you're going to need, and that's a killing blow. And Spidey says that no way, uh, because no one dies. That's my mission. Uh, you know that's that's his new you know that's his new kind of statement. No one dies while I'm around, and obviously he can't stop it, but he's not going to participate in it. That's for sure, at least not now. What we're going to see later, we don't know. Who knows? That's that's you know, and that's one of the, the you know, uh, Caselli doing some great art in this issue, um, but again. A lot of the credit, most of the credit goes to Dan Slott for writing the living shit out of this issue. It's just fantastic. It's, you know, again, if this wasn't such a hugely crowded week, this would be one of the books, this might, this, you know, this might be book of the week, or at least one of the top three, but there's so much good stuff this week. Um... So again, terrific issue. Uh, Ultimate Fallout number three, uh, written by Jonathan Hickman and Nick Spencer. Um, there, you know, uh, Brian Bendis is uh, notably absent. Um, basically, we've got three stories here. Uh, two of them, uh, Tony Stark. Uh, the first one is from uh, P- Tony Stark's point of view. Uh, he's at um, uh, Peter's, fu- you know, Peter's funeral. But he's thinking about the funeral that he just had for his brother Gregory, who was the big, uh, you know, the big traitor in the the Ultimates uh, uh, versus New Avengers plotline. Um, and he was, you know, totally fried to a crispy critter by Thor. Um, and Gregory kind of left behind the legacy that, you know, basically these. Uh, interesting, uh, and I guess the ultimate universe uh, version of uh, Contessa uh, uh, Valentina uh, de la Fontaine. Uh, it's, it's Val. 
I just saw, you know, she, she was, you know, Fury's kind of lover and uh, right hand woman for a while at, at Shield. Um, anyway, she's uh, all of these super rich, super powerful, self made people, not uh, you know, second or third generation rich people, you know, inherited wealth or anything like that. These are all self made wealthy people. Uh, they're part of the uh, Kratos Club. Um, and basically, they are using their their wealth and their power to influence events all all around the world. And they're offering Tony membership because they, you know, like they say, you know, you can't be Iron Man forever. So what are you going to do? You know, kind of, are you in or are you out? And that's where that arc leaves off for now. Um, then we go to Nick Spencer's tale of Kitty Pride. Um, and Kitty basically is walking, you know, she walks out of the, uh, the memorial service. Um, she sees people there, you know, you kind of get, you know, on TV, you kind of, when people die, you know, you kind of get that talking head. Well, you know, he, you know, this person did this for me. And, and sometimes you can just tell it's just assholes that want to get on TV. And she totally sees that. And, you know, she says, everybody get the fuck out of here. You know, all you people that are just kind of, you're vultures and you should not be here because you didn't care, you know, you didn't care about him when he was alive. You're only here because it's fashionable um, and because you can get on TV. You know, you, you were scared of him. You hated him when he was alive and when all he wanted to do was just do the right thing. And then she runs across Bobby uh, Drake, um, who's just kind of sitting there crying. Um, you know, again, not having read... Um, uh, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, except for issue 160, and like, th you know, 30 odd issues uh, of the run in between picking up, you know, kind of, you know, reading through some of the trades. Um, I didn't really pick up on too much. I don't know if Bobby was actually living with Aunt May. Um, I don't know about that, but uh, uh, basically they have a scene together in which, you know, we're just, we you know, Kitty and Bobby are just like, you know, Kitty's just saying we should get out of here and just live our lives and survive. But if we do no powers, no nothing, no playing hero, we're just going to be, we're just going to go somewhere and try and live normal lives. And Bobby is kind of on board for that, but he wants to see if Johnny will come with, Johnny Storm will come with too. Because, uh, you know, Again, both of these young men are quite, you know, are, you know, quite taken aback by the loss of their friend, um, and uh, so who knows what's going to happen with that? And then we have a third story written by Hickman uh, dealing with the Hulk and uh, Karen Grant. I have no idea who that is. Um, she seems to be having kind of a telepathic uh, therapy session with Bruce Banner. Um, and they're talking about, you know, the first time that he really kind of lost control and changed, and it was, you know, against Spidey. So obviously this all does tie into Spider-Man somehow. Um, but he's, uh, Banner seems to be losing more and more control over him turning into the Hulk. And Nick Fury is none too pleased about this. And basically, you know, if they can't get Bruce under control... Nick's absolutely 100% ready to put a bullet in that guy's brain because he's the Hulk and, you know, things could get very, very messy. And she kind of leaves him with, uh, you know, kind of dreaming of being the Hulk and being, you know, because that seems to be when he's at the most, uh, as most peaceful in his dreams, I guess, is when he's the Hulk and he's destroying the shit out of everything. Uh, the Hickman stories are good. But Spencer's story really stands out here. He writes for young people really well. He writes young characters very well, obviously, with Morning Glories. That is, nothing can be truer. Um, and so, I mean, it's a good issue all around, but Spencer's story, like, uh, kind of, uh, Spencer's story is really the standout here. So, a really good issue. Um, so, we'll be back with some more 
comic books in just a bit, so stay tuned.